Oh my gosh. This is trouble. This is trouble. I thought I was snagged. I thought I was snagged. I gotta chase it. It's a monster. It's a monster. Oh no, I'm gonna run out of line. What's going on everybody? Nick from 618 Fishing here and welcome back to another fishing adventure. I am nervous and excited for today's episode because we are heading to one of the furthest spillways that I travel to. It's over two hours away and honestly it's hit or miss. The last trip out there I hooked into an absolute giant. One of the biggest fish that I've ever hooked into but unfortunately it came off. So I'm heading back there today. Hopefully we'll be able to catch some big fish. I feel these pages turning. Yes the day is burning. Now's the time for learning, the future has come. We have made the two hour drive and arrived to the spillway, but you would not know that because it is actually underwater. I have never fished here with a water level this high. I've heard stories of monstrous, monstrous fish being caught from this spot with a water level high. Who knows? Oh my God, I just saw a giant. That was a state record. I just saw a monster fish come up to the surface right there. Oh my gosh, you guys, I cannot wait to get started. I am still in shock by the size of fish that I just saw come to the surface. That has to be a new state record. But like I was saying, I've heard stories of monstrous fish being caught from this spot with the water level high. So because of that, I brought my giant catfish rod, but along with that, I brought three other spinning combos. And as far as bait goes, I have a few options. I've got a giant frozen bag of what I believe is carp. I've got night crawlers and I have some chicken. So I've got a good variety of baits. Let's get started. Although the spillway is submerged, you can barely see the concrete structure of the spillway, but you can definitely see the muddy water coming out of it. So there is water flowing. Let's get some baits out there. I believe that monster fish that I saw would pick up a piece of carp. So let's go ahead and toss one out underneath this float. Okay, I've got a nice chunk of carp rigged up underneath this float. Let's toss it out there. Oh my gosh, did you guys just see that fish? That was a giant. I've got an even bigger chunk of carp rigged up on my big catfish rod. Let's launch it out there. The energy's awakening. There's no time for waiting. The sorrows I ain't chasing gonna overcome. I'm gonna change up locations just a bit. There is a really good vantage point over on that muddy bank. Let's go ahead and move over there. Just ate the bait. There we go. Fish on. Fish on. Oh, that's a decent fish. That's a decent fish. Oh, tons of snacks right there. Easy, buddy guy is strong. This of course is on my ultralight. Let's see if we can get lucky and land him. Oh nope, 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 nope. He didn't like that. Ton of submerged brush right out here in front of me. He does not look like he's hooked. Very good. Get away from that bush. He just refuses to give up. What a powerful fish. Man, almost had it. There we go, in the net. There we go. You guys, I just caught a really nice short nose gar with my ultralight, yes. This is one of the biggest short nose gar that I've ever caught. This is not the monster fish that I saw when I first got here, but it is a really nice one. 5.5 pounds. You guys, I think this is the new personal best. 
I have to check it really quickly. I beat it by 0.1 pounds. My previous personal best, which I caught last year, was 5.4 pounds. This guy was 5.5. What a cool first catch. See you later, buddy. I am blown away right now. Our first catch from this spillway was a new personal best short nose gar. And the crazy thing is, if I caught that fish right there a few years ago, that would have been a new state record short nose gar, but it has since been broken. And I believe it is around seven pounds now, but still, that is the biggest one that I've ever caught. But the craziest thing is, that fish right there is dwarfed by some of the fish that I have seen come up to the surface out there. I can't wait to see what we hook into next. These giant fish that I'm seeing should go for a rope lure and the idea behind a rope lure is the fish grabs onto it and essentially its teeth get tangled in the rope and you reel it in. I've caught some pretty decent sized fish including my personal best long nose gar with a rope lure. So I've had some success in the past. Let's try it today. Oh my God, that was a big fish. That was a big fish. Did you guys see that? Gosh dang, there are some monsters living here. Oh, something has my bait. All right, guys, something has the bait underneath the float. All right, it just went under. Here we go. Fish on! Fish on! Fish on, fish on! There we go! All right, looks like another short nose gar. Not as big as the one I caught with my ultralight, but I will take it. See you later, buddy. Although that short nose gar was nowhere near the size of that first one, I will take it because although I'm seeing a ton of fish activity, fishing itself is actually pretty slow. I think it's due to this muddy water. So far we caught one sight fishing, we caught one with the float, but I'm hoping as the sun sets, the big fish will become more active and hopefully one will pick up the bait. Seeing as I am catching gar, let's go ahead and substitute out the J hook for this treble hook. This will give me a better opportunity at setting a hook in their bony mounts. Oh my gosh, you guys. I'm hooked into something big. I thought I was snagged. Oh my gosh. This is trouble. This is trouble. I thought I was snagged. I thought I was snagged. I gotta chase it. It's a monster. It's a monster. Oh no, I'm gonna run out of line. I thought I was snagged. Dang it, 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 dang it. This is not good. This is not good. This is just huge. I'm not gonna be able to land it. I'm not gonna be able to land it. Oh, it came off. Dang it, dang it, dang it. Something absolutely gigantic picked up the nightcrawler. I thought I was literally snagged on the concrete and then it just slowly started moving. I've landed big fish with my ultralight in the past. I'm talking 30 plus pound fish and nothing I've caught with it has compared to what I just hooked into. Whatever that was, was huge and it was incredibly powerful. I am going to assume that whatever that fish was is feeding on bait that gets swept through the spillway Let's go ahead and rig up a weightless night crawler on my much larger rod and hopefully we'll get another chance. All right guys, something has to bait. 
There we go. Okay, well, not nearly as big as that giant fish that got away, but I will take it. Another short nose gar, and this is the smallest of the day. See you later, buddy. It is nerve wracking driving to a fishing spot and not knowing what to expect. I've come here and it has been completely dried up. Well, it is the opposite today. It is flooded and I did not know what to expect, but I certainly wasn't expecting to see all of these massive fish. I've counted probably five state record size long nose gar. Unfortunately though, I did not catch a single one, but I did have one opportunity, one massive fish. I'm guessing it was a gar, picked up the bait, and unfortunately though, it was on my ultralight and there was absolutely no way I was going to be able to land that fish. Having said that though, I was able to catch a new personal best short nose gar, which was awesome, and a few other fish. So needless to say, I had a lot of fun today. If you guys enjoyed this episode, I'd really appreciate it if you left a thumbs up. Possibly think about subscribing if you haven't. I'll catch you guys on the next one. I've heard stories of monstrous, monstrous fish being caught from this spot with a water level high. Who knows? Oh my god! I just saw a giant.